Hey everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Escalon Book 2, where we are going to start looking around the exterior of uh, Durnor, see if we can find that uh, Hamalorn mine entrance, or more importantly the supply entrance that we can actually open with the key that we have. And also, just to confirm, oh, we can actually go here, Hamalorn Mountain, that makes sense, I guess. Hamalorn Mountain, Hamalorn Mine. Got a feeling like... Oh, hold on a second. Wolves, I'm gonna be with you in a second. Uh, I'm actually gonna go ahead and apply my Ogre Strength. I mean, I could just go ahead and do some Stone Skin as well, because why not? Assuming that all lasts through the transition. Yeah, okay. I wasn't sure, actually. I don't think I've ever checked if, uh, you know, transitioning between areas makes more time pass than normal, but apparently not. Um, anything else? I guess I'm gonna switch to healing. Not that it matters, because I can't cast in combat like this anyway. Yeah, you know, I, I could wait for the third wolf. But... At only a 40% hit chance, I was unlikely to get the, uh, the cleave to actually hit multiple wolves anyway, so whatever. Alright. I guess I can do this. What? I will never get him. That's kind of annoying. <sighs> it's literally impossible. Oh, oh, okay. I turned around. Well, you know what? I'm gonna do that. <sighs> yeah, that was a little bit annoying. Put that equipment back on. Uh, wait, what? Oh. Because I never switched or resaved my config with the new shield. There we go. Unable to locate tempered steel studded leather. Oh, that as well, I suppose? Oh, okay. But it didn't take that up, of course. Hmm, tempered steel studded leather. Wait, that's... Huh? Was that my previous body armor? Did I replace that? I thought I replaced my pants. Oh, I don't know. Either way, it's updated now to whatever I have now. <clears throat> Right. Thankfully, the game doesn't just unequip anything it can't find or anything. That would be a little bit annoying. Okay, well, I mean, since this is called Hamalorn Mountain, uh, that seems to be the place to look for the mine. But I'm still going to continue looking uh, or exploring the Durnal region first. Who knows, there might be something interesting to be found here. Probably not, though. I don't know. I get a feeling like this is going to be more similar to those Hell Ice Lake maps. But we'll see. I suppose I could pause recording and just resume if I run into anything good. This certainly looks a little bit empty. You know what? Yeah, sure. I'm going to make that. Uh, make that. Do that. Whatever. Okay, well, a little bit of exploration, of uneventful exploration later. Not all that much, actually. I found this little clearing. The last couple of random chests that I found have been pretty disappointing. Eh, okay, that's a... Uh, actually, what is that? It's darker than a mana potion, so I'm not actually sure. Well, it's better than a single apple or something. So, I guess it's already... I'm already positively surprised. Uh, potion of Fortify Mana. Right, that... Like... Temporarily increases your m maximum mana, I think? Or something like that? Seems pretty... Pretty useless, honestly. I know I did look it up. 
did look up the effect of that potion and it didn't sound very good. I don't know. Temporary mana points, I mean. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, I just don't see how that's very useful. <clears throat> Especially since I already have a very decent amount. Maybe it's useful for um, a character who is not normally a spellcaster and somehow temporarily gives himself spellcasting ability to be able to cast some kind of spell. Which, I don't know, normally if you're playing that kind of character you'd, you'd be relying on potions, right? Which can replicate most spell effects. So, yeah, I don't know. And I guess now I'm exploring again on camera. I gotta fill the episode anyway, so here we are, I guess. I don't know, it's also not like most other maps have been that much more interesting, I suppose. Just something about these icy maps feels particularly empty. There's also a lack of enemies, which certainly doesn't help. We're only a few wolves away from leveling up, too. And I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do with that level up. Well, I suppose I'm going to put more points into... I don't know, armor, probably? See if that does anything. I think, actually... Oh God, where are we? Light armor 5. Hmm. Oh yeah, we do have damage reduction 3. I think 7 might give us something, but I would also like to put points into... Um, more points into my weapon skill. Oh, okay. So, were there mountains on... on the adjacent map here? Oh, that's the one? No, never mind. That's this one. So... No mountains here. Bit of a continuity error. So what happens if we go there? Normally your position on each... Oh. That is interesting. Oh, in fact, that is extremely unfortunate. That is a, an unfortunate oversight. I mean, I didn't think this was going to happen, honestly. I thought it was going to just put me down here. Because I was just about to say that normally your position seemed to perfectly, uh, you know, co-align between the maps. And indeed that seems to be the case. They just forgot to put some mountains there to prevent you from doing this. Thankfully, I should be able to do this. Whew, thank goodness. That would have sucked. <laughs> okay, it's all good. Thankfully, fast travel is a thing. Of course, if there had been some random wolf nearby... I would have been really screwed. Because I I kind of think that's stuck inside those those rocks. I uh, most likely would not have had line of sight. Okay, Catalyst is still active. It's just dark. Hmm. It's not that dark, though, thankfully. At least there is good contrast between the ground and, the, and everything else. So that's something that this icy area has going for it. But, uh, yeah, I probably would not have been able to use ranged weapons or spells to kill any enemies that would have prevented me from fast traveling. So, uh, well, let's just be glad that there are actually no enemies on this map. But, uh, well, yeah, yeah that, was, that was fun. Interesting, at the very least. <sighs> Too bad there are no, like, random caves to explore, you know? That's, that's something that this game is kind of... Kind of lacking. Just, yeah, there is the occasional clearing with a chest or something, but, you know, those rarely have anything good in them. And even if they do, it's, you know, just a random chest somewhere, not really anything to explore. <clears throat> so just some small optional dungeons, that kind of thing, would be nice. But, you know, it's a small project. Like a, a one-man studio, I think, mostly. So I absolutely understand that there has to be limited content and, you know, 
rather fo focus on a decent main quest and everything. And if that means less side content, that's okay. There is a third game after all, and you know, you can basically look at these three games as one continuous game, and then it's a pretty, pretty meaty one. Of course, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to play the third game right after this one. I could, of course. I kind of want to, maybe. We'll see how much longer this one is and how I feel once I'm done, but... I don't think I would mind. Also, I'm, I'm done with this map now, aren't I? Looks like that's all there is. There's no a way to explore the areas around town. It's just all just mountain. Okay, um, I mean, inventory-wise and everything else-wise, you're looking good. I could sell this stuff, but that's okay. And it's about to dawn as well. So, not too much longer do we have to contend with this dark. Now, my instincts tell me that the mine entrance is probably somewhere along the mountain. You know, that's my years of adventuring experience telling me that. But, of course, I still want to see what the rest of this map is all about. At least this one should have some more wolves. So I'm going to go ahead and cast Ogre Strength in preparation. Not that I strictly need it, but it helps. Also, I think I tried this before, right? Or did I? Okay. That's what I thought. Nothing below that. Some random blood splatters on the ice. Oh, there we go. Some action. Eh. I was gonna wait with my cleave to see if maybe the second wolf would get into into range before the first one was dead, but nope. Unfortunately, my hits were a little bit too accurate. Strength has run out. I guess if I actually do see more wolves, I can just quickly stop, unequip stuff, and then cast the spell. And let's see, there should probably not be anything past here. Yep. Okay. Just as ex expected. Probably at the very westernmost point. Oh, okay. Oh, does the mountain actually go all the way down till here, or is this a little bit of a solitary rock formation. No, it seems pretty solid. Okay, of course now I want to go around it. Hmm. Where would the mine be? Oh, well, probably here, huh? Although, uh -huh, you know what? This is probably the main entrance. I mean, this is definitely not the supply entrance. This looks pretty... pretty imposing. The entrance to Hemelorn Mine is a huge granite tower rising up against the snow-covered cliffs. The top of the tower is lost in a flurry of snow and clouds. It is an epic construct, far taller and more majestic than anything you've ever witnessed of human endeavors. Also, 
a little bit over the top for a mine entrance. Although I guess a dwarven mine is not just, a, you know, a purely uh, functional place to to get ore and, and gems from, but also like a cultural thing. Uh, the door to the mine appears to be made of a single solid piece of burly oak wrapped with uh, bands of dwarven steel. Not a hundred men with a hundred axes could hope to break through in less than a week's time. There must be another entrance. Okay, so knocking, let alone breaking in, isn't even an option. Not that I, I expected any less. Okay, so um, now I'm guessing, of course, that the uh, supply entrance that we're looking for is actually around that little rock outcropping. Of course, it could be this way. Cold wind blows, carrying the wind of uh, the, the wind, the scent of snow. Mm. You think that it already smells of snow around here? Whatever that actually means. I guess I kind of get it. Although technically snow shouldn't really have much of a smell. <clears throat> okay. I uh, probably can't walk past here. Nope. Not quite. As expected, nothing here. Now we fill in the blanks. Maybe finding another World War II, but honestly, I probably would have seen them or vice versa. Still, how many wolves away from leveling up? Oops, wait, can just go through here. Doesn't look like it, but the minimap tells me to. Tells, tells me so. Oh. Obviously, it must be right. Uh, just over a thousand. One thousand and seventy divided by one hundred and sixty. No way, I'm doing that math. And there's the entrance anyway. So, thankfully, I don't need to. Okay, good. This was all there was here. No, hopefully we'll have an actual dungeon to explore and, you know, just a little bit more exciting things. Nice. The key works, as expected. And we're in. Oh, okay, I was not expecting the quest to finish immediately and to give me that much experience. Well, there is our level up. Um, this looks to be a service entrance to Hamelorn Mines. Um, the air in the mine is warm and dry and carries with it an oddly pleasant smell of bread and malted barley, mixed with the fumes of smelt ore. Hmm, alright. Okay, level up. Uh, armor. Shields. I have no idea. Actually, I really don't know what an increased shields, shield skill does for me. Oh, beginning at level 10, using the shield will increase your chances of completely deflecting any attack. I see. That seems like quite the investment. And the question is, does it do anything before that? Beginning at skill level 10. It will increase my chances. So do I already have that chance? I don't know. The wording is not necessarily always 100% reliable, I feel. Um, cleaving weapons. I'm pretty sure that Further increasing the skill does reduce the cooldown on, on Great Cleave, which is decent. 
Hmm. I mean, now that I have the shield skill and I've actually started using shields, I kind of want to put more points into it. But to even reach the skill level 10, I'm going to have to put all my points for the next two levels and then some. So for the next three levels, I will have to invest in shields. And I don't even know if I'm going to level up two more times after this. That's, um, I feel like I'm getting very close to the end of the game. Although there are two more fast travel markers on the list, aren't there? So, I don't know. There could be more left than I, than I think. Hmm... Ah, it's a tough choice. So many things I would like to increase. You know what? Let's just put something into everything and not get anywhere with any of the skills. That's okay. Um, strength, a little bit. I have absolutely forgotten if I had any plans to increase something specifically. I guess I technically need more wisdom to be able to learn more skills. More, more spells, that is. And again, I don't, I'm not really sure. I think one point is not enough. Perception. Mana regen, mana gains. Honestly, my mana is, seems to be in a good place. Concentration to hit. And more carrying capacity. But I could also just go for more strength. More damage. Yeah, you know what? That seems okay. Just a very random level up. Not very planned, and if I had any plans before, again, I absolutely do not remember. But that's okay. Hmm. This is a pretty long corridor. Oh no. So, any dwarves in here, unfortunately, are immediately hostile. That is unfortunate. But it can't be helped, I suppose. I guess, technically, I could try to avoid killing as many of them as possible, but I don't think the game is going to acknowledge that in any kind of way, so whatever. Uh, these rooms look to be dry storage areas. Unfortunately, there doesn't appear to be much edible food here. Well, I have plenty. That's okay. Uh, most of what you see is dried spices, rolled grains, uh, balls of uh, cut barley and wheat and other ingredients needed for Dwarven cuisine. I mean, in a pinch, I could absolutely eat some of those things. Sorry, man. Okay, well, that was obviously a guaranteed attack, so... Huh? And that was a 36% hit chance with target partially hidden by darkness and with a power strike. And the Dwarf only has a 14% hit chance against me. That seems pretty decent. They're somewhat tanky, but that's to be expected. I'm guessing they're worth probably about 200 XP. 180. Okay, well, close enough. So, let's see if there's really nothing useful in here. Well, unknown beverage, maybe some Dwarven Ale. I think I'll pass. Oh, two shedding bar shedding? Uh, two shotting barrels now. Alright, dried meat, I'll take that. See that's good food. Huh? Oh, that's a it only looks like a loot bag. Now, which way was the correct one? Or will they both just loop around in the end? Huh? We'll see eventually. Oh, there's another one. Hmm. Well, it's okay. I hope. Of course, now they start hitting, and I stop hitting. They dropped something, though. I wonder if that's gonna be just random equipment, like with bandits. Or maybe gemstones, or just gold, or something. sounds, though. Alright. 
Yep, gold. Pretty typically dwarvish. Didn't need to heal full, but that's okay. Actually, that took almost no, no mana. Pretty nice. Several dwarves here, though. <laughs> My casting weight allowed allowed weight for casting has gone up to two uh, to two, but no, has gone up to eleven by one point or one pound. Um, so that's nice. Hey, dwarf. You've seen me, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it has gone up to 11, but obviously that doesn't really make a difference, so... Okay, no drops from you. Okay, we have better hit chances now. Yep, just more gold. Kind of unfortunate. Just because it's not so interesting, but... Um, well, we... Get some actual loot here. Oh, his strength is still going. Was this one less healthy, or...? This is a different one. Door to Miner. Oh, yeah. I did... No, actually, never mind. No, it's the same one. Okay. Hmm. Um, let's go ahead and take a look. Scroll of D-Hex. Hmm, D-Hex. Would that be curse removal? No. Hmm. Druid's head. Iron two-handed sword. Two-handed, huh? Is that a thing? I don't think I found a weapon that was explicitly two-handed. As in... Well, except for ranged weapons. Hmm. Or bow specifically, I guess. Other ranged weapons. Thrown weapons are one-handed. Um, D-Hex. Well, I definitely haven't found this one before. I don't know if I can't even learn another spell. I'm just curious what it is. Oh, I can. Okay. So let's take a look. Removes any curses or hexes. Okay, so hexes are things separate from curses. Hmm, that I have definitely not encountered. And that is my first tier 3 spell. I don't actually know if I want it, if I want to use my probably only my probably only spell slot right now. Um on this. Not sure what I would want to use it for, but I don't know. Since I haven't even encountered any hexes and I can't be affected by curses, this might not be something that I really need, so I think I'm going to reload this one. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to hold on to it. Who knows, maybe I'm going to get hexed uh, in this very dungeon. It's possible, I suppose. There are any dwarven, I don't know, shamans? Dwarven, dwarvens? <laughs> Dwarves aren't really known for using any kind of magic or the like. Maybe Dwarven Priests of some sort? Those tend to be a thing. I'm still in precision mode. Actually... Hmm. Hold on. Badly prepared. Cannot swap equipment in parry mode. Of course not. That's fine. What? Wait. Was I attacked twice there? Oh, because I... Yeah. Changing equipment does use two turns. Uh, 19 turns remaining, that should be okay. Uh, put the stuff back on, get attacked twice, or only once. Well, since I'm not gonna get any cleaves, might as well use that there. Okay, you dropped your gold there for some reason. Could 
be switching to a, a more precise combat mode, but whatever. Okay, Copper Dagger, no thank you. An unknown book, though. Doesn't mean that it's something I haven't read yet, but it could be. I do have more spider legs. And bread, actually. Wasn't sure. Okay, unknown pants that look, that look like they could be uh, light armor. Interesting. Really? Um, anyway. Let's not do that. I'm encumbered now, right, because of course overstrength would run out. Uh, I guess there must have been, there must be dwarves over this way. There certainly don't seem to be any nearby. Recast that. Um, I'm assuming, yeah, copper maze, that's not very useful. Out of here. Uh, the Adventures of Brambit the Thief. I'm pretty sure I haven't seen that one before. Excellent bronze chain leggings. Unfortunately heavy. And not that good. Really not that good. Huh. Also not very, exp not very valuable at all. Traps and Tribulations. Pretty sure I've seen that one. Shields up. Definitely seen that one. Yeah, in fact, I've definitely seen both of these. Okay. Um, yep. And this one? The young footpad froze. A grizzled-looking guard stood up from his post and began walking toward the bushes. Fear gripped the boy, for he knew that his first night on the prowl was about to end in a most dreadful manner, while he made pace, peace with his... A short future. Memories of his training began to filter through his mind. Hiding in the darkness is only half of being stealthy. Okay, so it's unfortunately the hiding in shadows talent or skill that I'm not really interested in, but oh well. Um, it wouldn't matter if it were darker than the depths of hell should you be prattling ar around like a tinker hauling his pots and pans. A true master of quiet can walk over a, m a mountain of bells without so much as a single chime. The guildmaster paced constantly around the room, not a single whisper of clothing belying his presence. Remember to match your breathing with your movement. Any any weapons or metal armor should be covered with a soft cloth to prevent any accidental announcements of your position. Be mindful of the noises around you. Try to move in sync with the wind, the rustling leaves, or the surrounding animals. Walk on the balls of your feet, and for the sake of whatever gods you happen to worship, watch when you're walking. A large rat suddenly burst forth from the bushes, scuttling off into the distance. Startled, the guard jumped back. After a moment, he returned to his post. Shoulders slumped seemingly in disappointment. Never get any excitement around here. The thief sighed inward with, inwardly in relief, slowly lifting his foot from its place atop a broken branch. All right. Move silently, that's what it's called. Yeah, well, not what I wanted, but it's okay. Uh, of course, these are not exactly very valuable, and I also absolutely don't need any more money, so you know what? There, have your books back. Actually, these are not in the correct drawer, but that's fine. You guys gonna sort that out. That's Those pants were also quite heavy for how not very valuable they were. Also, I completely neglected that corridor for some reason. Oh, good water. What do you know? You know what? I'm just gonna eat something as well. I have a feeling like, I'm, like I also have way too much food. Way more than I'm going to need for the rest of the game. But Again, who knows? Maybe I'm going to be surprised by how much more game there is left. Hmm. Okay. That was easy. Ooh. Large rats. Better safe than sorry. Um, was it? Oh, 46%. Attack chance against the bone biter. I feel like we've seen these before. Alright, definitely no need to be particularly careful against these. Yeah, red meat. Thanks, but no thanks. So, is this just the trash pit, or <laughs> is there something more going on here? One silverware. Yeah, I guess that's really what it is. Okay, I'll check just 
just in case. Yeah, just red meat. Not interested. Oh, I didn't see that you can loot this one. There's the bread. Right back. Hello, see me please. Have you seen me? Well, now you have. Wow, get wrecked. Which again? Well, it worked, so I guess there's dead. All right, and combat music is still going. Yeah, something's something. Someone is still nearby. Okay, not that nearby. Cat eyes and ogre strength, just because. This actually looks like some kind of throne room. Oh wow! Pretty good hit, but I also took some pretty, pretty nasty hits myself here. I was just about to say, huh, no traps here. Well, I guess there was one after all. Thankfully, not too bad. Should probably go ahead and look for a place to rest somewhere. To refill my mana, but first, what is this? Uh, life force pen and 20 hit points. 15 toxin resistance. Hmm. Do I want to give up on 2 points of damage? For 10 points of extra hit points. That doesn't seem... I mean, just last time I was talking about how good this am this amulet is for, you know, how early in the game it shows up, and how those 10 hit extra hit points are actually not insignificant. Shouldn't that mean that an, ex that an additional 10 hit points should be just as significant? Plus the toxin resistance, which of course, since I can cure any toxin, isn't really all that important anymore. Uh, I don't know. Two points of damage are two points of damage. It's not like the game considers these any different in terms of value. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm gonna stick with the damage. This is probably toward the main entrance, right? Yeah, it seems to be. Hmm. No message about it, though. And of course, no way to open it. Okay. It's nice that they thought of that. I mean, of course they would. Would have been kind of silly not to include this. So maybe this leads to the inner part where we're actually going to go down to where we want to be. And this leads around the outside. We did find a key for something. Oh, not for this though. Oh yeah, sure. It's a decent enough chance. There we go. A little bit of extra experience. All right. No trap here, huh? Good. Zolden's Guide to Light Armor Materials, Rotted Meat, Noxamander Venom, what the heck? The room looks so fancy, but... Flesh Boil, Unknown Axe, it's probably not good, if we're being honest. Okay. That's just a bronze dagger, I mean, 
What else would it be? Yeah, exactly what it is. Surprisingly valuable, though, actually. Hmm. That's more valuable. Fiendish Dwarven Steel Javelin plus 2 times 8. Okay. Not terrible. Iron Double Battle Axe. That's kind of terrible. Okay. What do I get? What do I keep? Not this one. That's too heavy for what it is. Um, I mean, it's pretty valuable. That, of course, isn't really all that valuable. These are 150 apiece. That adds up, but they also weigh 3 pounds apiece. That's, um... That adds up as well. That's only 370. That's definitely not worth it. The pelts, 5 pounds, 25. You know what? That's really not worth it. So if anything, I should keep these things, probably. The hat, 200, but only 1.5 pounds. I don't know. Again, it, money is probably absolutely unimportant at this point. Probably. I mean, the shop in Durnor, assuming the all the dwarves did not uh, turn hostile the moment I entered here. I really hope that's not the case, but then again, it might be. Okay, I'm completely out of mana now. Should keep that in mind. That was not a problem. And more gold. I could be picking up all kinds of torches as well. But uh, I'm not even using torches because. That is unfortunately so con so inconvenient when you're using a shield. Kind of realistic, but I don't know. I kind of wish the game would forego that little bit of realism and just allow me to light a torch and just assume that my character is holding it somehow while out of combat and maybe just putting it on the ground while in combat. You know, not everything needs to be simulated 100% accurately. Sometimes just a little bit, a little bit of convenience is uh, preferable to realism, but it's okay. Okay, we open that and probably use the key here. Yes, security key. Okay, and apparently, even though the dwarves aren't much for using magic, they're okay with using teleportation runes. Okay, that's kind of disappointing for this forge area, but oh well. Okay, well we made it through the first floor of Hamelorn Mine. What's it say there? Prepare yourself. There's a one-way trip down a long road. Oh boy. Hmm. Maybe I should walk out of here and sell some stuff. I mean, technically, I just don't need any of this, but I can always drop it later. If I need to make room, because I'm obviously already kind of at the limit. With uh, with uh, Ogre Strength, I have a bit more capacity, but still. Well, depending on, on how long the road is, it's probably not going to be quite as bad as Fathomark, but... Mm, you never know. Well, anyway, I, I think I should be good in terms of resources, and, you know, if I can't take all the loot with me, oh well, so be it. I think I'm going to be okay. Um, yeah, next time we're going to step into this one-way teleport and see what's await what, what awaits us deeper inside. Um, if we can make it to, the, to that crux right away next time, or if that's going to be a bit of a, of a longer thing. For the time being, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and I shall see you real soon. Bye-bye.